We've got a handful of laptops all set up here for a big old fashioned Cinebench run, which is pretty much the CPU equivalent of a drag race. We've got the top performers from Intel over on this side, a couple of Core i7s, their latest and greatest mobile Core i9, and then this weird one from Alienware with a desktop eight core processor. That's our current king of the hill. And then over here, we've got AMD's desktop eight core muscle car equivalent. This was only dethroned very recently, along with something really, really special. The ASUS ROG Zephyrus GA502 is the first laptop to hit our studio that features an AMD mobile Ryzen processor. The Ryzen 7 3750H to be exact, meaning that was actually made to be used in a laptop, unlike this one. So without further ado, gentlemen, let's hit it and see if Team Red is able to regain its place at the top of the Cinebench leaderboard. Three, two, one, go. This video is brought to you by Glasswire. With Glasswire, you can instantly see your current and past network activity, detect malware, and block badly behaving apps on your PC or Android device. Use offer code Linus to get 25% off at the link below. Okay, so our two eight core Intels are done. Our eight core AMD is done. Our first Core i7 is done over there. Second Core i7 is done. Everyone's done, but the... Oh boy. Um, is this supposed to happen? Yeah. Okay, hey! It's not about finishing first. It's about finishing together. So the GA502 isn't super fast, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't consider it for your next gaming notebook because it has two really big things going for it. Power consumption, and price. Let's dig into the specs a little. The Ryzen 7 3750H only features four cores and eight threads with a maximum speed of four gigahertz. That's kind of surprising given the way that Intel has been pushing up mobile core counts recently. I thought that was kind of AMD's jam. The thing is though, for a gaming machine, there's actually very little benefit to going beyond four cores. So AMD's approach ends up giving us way more bang for the buck. So this laptop that we've got right here, equipped with a GTX 1660 Ti Max-Q and 16 gigs of RAM, comes in at only $1,200. Dang. And in our testing, the CPU performed admirably. I mean, by admirably, I mean, I, I wouldn't have paired it with a more powerful graphics card or anything, but we still managed to get AAA games above 60 FPS at high details, and we comfortably reached 120 FPS, which matches our 120 Hertz refresh rate in lighter and esports titles. As for use outside of gaming, we generally saw a similar performance to the Intel Core i5-8300H. So nothing amazing, but our Zephyrus GA502 stayed cool and quiet, even when it was under full synthetic load. That doesn't mean ASUS didn't make some compromises though. Moving from the inside to the outside, compared to the other Zephyrus's, Zephyrus I? Doesn't matter. The GA502 doesn't quite have the same build quality. Not that it needs it. It lacks visual accents like an RGB keyboard, and the chassis has a slightly plasticier feel. But all of that is pretty easy to forgive since most Zephyrus's cost two to three times as much. Also, when compared to similarly priced competition like the Dell G5, the GA502 easily takes the cake for overall look and feel. Like there's basically no chassis flex. Furthermore, it's impressively thin for a gaming laptop and the metal on the back of the screen and the really thin bezels give it a very modern look. Now the screen itself is merely pretty good. But once again, for the price, it's more like pretty darn good. It's of the 1080p IPS variety, so no fancy retina branding here, but it gets bright enough for comfortable use in a well-lit office, and it sports a 120 hertz refresh rate, making it generally very enjoyable to game on and even acceptable for watching movies and shows, with the above average speakers adding to the experience as well. As far as connectivity goes, the Zephyrus has four USB ports, 
one of which is Type-C, along with full-sized HDMI, headphones, and Ethernet, which is better than most modern devices. There's no Thunderbolt 3, mind you, but you're not gonna see that on any AMD devices for a little while, while Thunderbolt 3 makes the transition to becoming USB 4. One shortfall here, though, is the Wi-Fi. With just a one by one Wi-Fi 5 card, this thing chugs during large downloads. Like it's, it's the kind of thing you wouldn't think would be noticeable, but it definitely is, and you're gonna wanna plug into the wall whenever you're installing a game or copying files over the network. Now, so far, the GA502 has been faring pretty well, but where most gaming laptops faceplant is the trackpad. And this one actually seemed like it was going to at first, like for whatever reason, my finger kept kind of getting stuck on it and skipping around. But then after using it for a day, my hand grease actually made it pretty nice and smooth to use. So, so that's pretty gross. Um, but I guess it also goes to show that a little lubrication is never a bad thing. And the usability score keeps getting better. The keyboard is downright excellent. No finger lube required. It's got a snappy short throw that easily beats out the Dell G5 and Acer's Helios 300 while still being both comfortable and quiet. Now, as I mentioned before, it doesn't have an RGB backlight, but it is still backlit which is a lot of help if you're working on assignments at night and you're not a comfortable touch typist. And there's more good news for the slow typists out there. The 76 watt hour battery gave us close to five hours on a single charge in our standard test. Now, that's not an amazing result compared to a low power Ultrabook, but it's way better than similar gaming laptops and well beyond the threshold of usable. So I can't really complain. What I will complain about though, Asus, is where the holy hell is the webcam? I really hope that you guys figure out how to get a webcam in a small bezel laptop sooner rather than later. I mean, Dell did it. I'm gonna get real sick of telling you guys that no webcam at all is in fact worse than having a bad or even a poorly positioned webcam. The thing that makes this really difficult though is that you guys are never going to learn if I don't stop recommending your bloody devices. Like, honestly, even, even this would be better, I think. Actually, no, I'm not sure that that would be better. Back to the recommendation. There's no getting around it for me. If you guys are looking for a somewhat budget-oriented gaming laptop, you should go grab a Zephyrus GA502. So, that's all there is to it. End of video, right? No, not quite yet. Because here's a big question. Why is it that AMD was able to so effectively crush the Intel competition in this market segment? Well, as it turns out, this is less of a win for AMD and more of a colossal screw up from Intel. So when OEMs are specking out their systems, Intel will offer kickbacks if one of their higher end processors, like a Core i7 gets used, even if that processor doesn't make a ton of sense for the rest of the configuration. So if you were ever wondering, what is up with those weird laptops where the CPU power vastly outstrips the GPU, that's what's been going on here. Because in many cases, a quad core Core i5 is gonna keep up with a 1660 Ti or even up to a 2070 Max-Q, and it'll do it at a lower price. But Intel's branding strategy is leaving this giant hole in the market that AMD has filled quite tidily here, simply by allowing laptops with their processors in them to be specced in a way that makes sense for gamers. This just in, at Computex 2019, laptops were revealed from Dell and Lenovo featuring i5 processors and 1660 Ti's, seemingly in response to AMD's pressure at this price point. Now, this news does not change our recommendation of the GA502, but it's still very exciting and gives consumers extra options. Now back to you, Linus. So once again, AMD's return to competitiveness is a win for consumers. So I say why not celebrate by picking up a sensible gaming laptop at the link in the video description. And while you're down there, why not check out Displate? Displate is a magnet-mounted metal print that's durable and doesn't require any power tools to hang it. They've got over 26 tens of thousands 
Just over a quarter million different arts spanning a bunch of different styles and influences. And with their easy magnetic mounting, there are no holes in the wall and it's easily replaceable. They plant 10 trees for every display purchased and you can use code LTT to save 15% at the link in the video description. So thanks for watching guys. If you disliked, you know where that button is, but if you liked this video, hit like, get subscribed, or maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link below. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one and our community forum, which you should totally join.